In 2005, I believe it was, I met Brian Copes. I met Brian at a meeting I attended, and he was one of the keynote speakers, and he explained what was going on here in Calera with his basic utility vehicle. And as I sat in the audience listening to his story, I began shooting this documentary in my head. It's such a great story, such a tremendous uh, story about education, about kids using their brains, uh, about an inspired teacher. So I just had to do it. I had to get together with Brian. After the meeting, we talked about it, and we decided that we were going to shoot this documentary. Uh, back in uh, 2006, I began teaching middle school students, and I, I've never taught middle school students before. I didn't know what they were capable of doing. Uh, it was actually an age that I was frankly scared of, because I remember what I did to my middle school teachers. So one night, uh, I brought in an old easy-go workhorse golf cart and parked it in my classroom. They had no clue what was going on, but I challenged the kids to pimp my ride, just like the popular TV show at the time. And just watching these kids tear this thing apart and put it back together, it turned out better than I anticipated. So the next year, I challenged the kids not to rebuild a golf cart, but to become inventors, become modern day Henry Fords and invent and create and fabricate a car, a utility vehicle from scratch to go to developing countries. I, I think I was the one that was most surprised when I watched the kids. They were coming in at 6, 6.30 in the morning, they were bringing their lunches into the classrooms, they could get extra work time. They would stay till 6, 6.30 at night. I finally had to just send them home because I was exhausted. At the end of the year, they had their vehicle and it actually ran. I really didn't know what to do, but I entered the kids into a collegiate engineering competition up in Indiana. So I took my kids up to Indiana. They were introduced as Chelsea University at the time. Then at, the, uh, at lunchtime, they were saying Chelsea High School. And when they held up the first place trophy, Chelsea Middle School came in first place, beating out college teams like Purdue University. We were the only non-collegiate team there that year. I'm Shannon Foster. I am currently a junior at Auburn University. I started with Brian Copes at Chelsea Middle School, uh, working on the BUV project. As you see here, this is me in my eighth grade year. It was definitely a big challenge for us as middle schoolers as we competed against top colleges um, in Indiana and it was it was definitely rewarding to see our work pay off. It presented a lot of challenges because of the ingenuity that went into it and the design. Uh, it, it was totally made out of you know water pipe which was revolutionary. Nobody had ever thought of doing something like that. It was totally economical and, and very easy to ship which made it a cool design. Brian does things you know most shop teachers don't do. Uh, he has a lot of neat opportunities that he provides to students as far as hands-on approach. You know, a lot of people don't have that access to hands-on approaches. And I know when I did it, uh, it really moved me to want to take an interest in cars. And my dream job is to try to work for a manufacturing company such as a car manufacturing company in their business department. And a lot of it has to do with where we started at in my eighth grade year with Brian Copes. I am currently now a member of, a board member of Sky. And just crazy to see how I started off as this little guy here and now I'm part of this board member where I can help maybe students get the same kind of exposure to the different things that I got exposed to. Uh, this program is extremely important in my opinion to the success that I've had you know, in my life. I mean it takes a lot of critical thinking skills to do what we did right here. You can relate, relate that to all things in life. I hope to have kids one day and I definitely want my children to be involved in something like this, like much, much like I was, uh, because it was that important to my life and my, and I believe my success that I've had as a student and now a board member on this wonderful board. I'm a, on the board of directors of the SKY, which stands for Skilled Knowledgeable Youth. Brian Copes is our figurehead. He, he's got great leadership abilities. He's got great great stamina, he's got intelligence. The reason that we came to be is because in, I think, uh, 06, 05, when Brian started his STEM program, he had to have a board of directors, or a what they called an advisory board. 
And so he formed, he went out and recruited people from all over the state. Uh, and we are people from all different walks. I mean, we've got welders, electricians, uh, and uh, accountant, a lawyer, and a film producer. I want students to go to college that want to go to college. And so we, and in this program in Sky, we are promoting the technical side of life. We'd like students to get involved in this program that Brian has been involved with and these students that he's been, I think 600 or more students have gone through Brian's school and classrooms in the past six years, seven years. Some have gone into college, some have gone into technical schools, um, some have gone straight to work. It's a great way for people to learn, and it also improves the education system, I believe. And that's, that's one of the reasons I'm doing this. I want the students to benefit from the education system, and I want the education system to benefit from the students. But we did that project for five years. I did it twice at uh, Chelsea Middle School. Uh, the second year we built a school bus. I mean, I, I really didn't know where this was going, but it was neat to watch the progression over a five-year span of doing these competitions as students at Chelsea, and then I, I got transferred over to Calera High School. But the, the high school students, or Calera students, built an ambulance, which to me was one of the neatest vehicles that they ever made, capable of transporting patients. They made a four-wheel drive that can plow fields. They also put a water well drill on the back of it so it can go from community to community drilling fresh water wells. In the midst of all of this, we had a local artificial limb specialist come as a guest speaker. I had to teach biomedical engineering as part of my curriculum. He showed us a $60,000 leg. He says this is what he puts on most of his patients, average cost at $60,000. He showed us one, he said, this is the most inexpensive one on the market today. It's two to three thousand dollars. What you put on a little old lady to go back and forth to the restroom, but not comfortable enough to walk across Walmart in. But he started talking about the need for inexpensive prosthetics in developing countries such as Haiti, very, very poor places of the world where people are lucky to make two dollars and fifty cents a day. They can't afford a two or three thousand dollar leg, let alone a sixty thousand dollar leg. So their livelihood is really hindered because when a person loses their leg, they also lose the ability to use their arms because their arms are holding them up with crutches. So there's very, the, the job outlook for them is very bleak. So I took my kids out in the shop and I said, okay guys, the challenge is to make an inexpensive leg that can go to developing countries similar to the utility vehicles. But they found a, a motor mount off of a 1989 Toyota Corolla they use that as the knee and ankle joint. They use the same pipe and pipe fittings that were found on our, our BUV and actually created a leg. So we created a leg using what I call BUV, or basic utility vehicle technology. When we first started developing our utility vehicles, you know, one of the things that we needed was parts. So after doing some research, after the students actually did some research, they discovered that the Toyota Corolla was the most abundant car, or prevalent car found throughout the world. So I gave them the challenge, I said, well, okay, when you design your basic utility vehicles, use Toyota Corolla parts, because it's important when you ship these things overseas that they can find replaceable parts, not only in the U.S., but around the world. They can find them in their country. And what's really neat about that, not only the, the parts that are they used on utility vehicles, the Toyota Corolla parts, but the parts that they used on their prosthetics are also Toyota parts. So if something breaks down on their leg, they can again get parts in country to repair their leg. Uh, we had the artificial limb specialist come in. He saw what we created and he was just floored. He says, man, that looks like it actually work. He took it, fitted on a local amputee, and he said, man, this thing works flawlessly. He then took it to Honduras, where he put it on an amputee, and the amputee is wearing it today. But the next year, that served as a catalyst for the next year. We took that design, we said we want to improve it, because the complaint was it was too heavy. It weighed about nine pounds. 
So my students looked at ways to make it lighter, make it more functional. They replaced the tibia fibia bone instead of a metal pipe. They put a crutch in there so it could be put on a child and it could grow with the child. Um, they shaved nearly three pounds off the weight of the leg, making it about six pounds. We made 15 legs. We, we took 14 of them to Honduras the summer of 2012 and fit 14 amputees. One of my greatest moments in teaching was having one of my students come running up to me and saying, it's a miracle, it's a miracle. And he was watching, he witnessed a man walk for the first time in years. I, this was something that my student helped create that changed a man's life. And just watching my student's reaction, just how miraculous and stunned he was because it's something that he did. He gave of himself to help another. And it was the same story over and over and over for about 14 times. We had uh, wives come up to us just crying. She says, you don't understand what you've done to change my husband's life. She says, once he lost his leg, he was contemplating suicide because he couldn't provide for the family anymore. And she says, he walked away from here a changed man. He has got a, a positive outlook on life. But that, that's one of my proudest moments. The idea that the kids have had is to build a third world prosthetic. And with what the students are coming up with, it's, it's a really inexpensive approach towards prosthetics. I've really liked what I've seen with Clara High School uh, and the students there and what their interests are in taking the BUV and the prosthetics to uh, rural parts of third world countries and really accessing people who other, otherwise would not have been able to be treated with, with prosthetics. I tell people this story all the time. Uh, when an amputee stands up for the very first time, it's, it's one of the few times I'm, I'm not looking at their legs and watching what's going on with their legs. I look at somebody's face and the amount of emotions that comes over someone's face when they stand up for the first time, is, uh, it's overwhelming. And so it's not just one time that that's happened this week, but every single time an amputee stood up for the first time, that's what I got to see, and that's what makes it all worthwhile. The motto that we have with Sky is children changing the world. And I think that if we can all rally together, we can, we can take these children as well as ourselves and literally change the world. When I first saw that one guy walk, I was just amazed. I, I didn't think it would even be possible, but when he started walking on it, I was like, it is possible. We actually did do a good job. But you know, also when we went to, to Honduras, we took two of our utility vehicles. One was shipped in kit form, and my kids taught the Honduran kids how to build this vehicle with just simple hand tools. And that one's being used as an ambulance by uh, Clinic the Angels. Uh, they're in Honduras, so it's going from village to village doing medical clinics, if you will, uh, taking people to and from medical facilities, running supplies up into the mountains, uh, we took a second vehicle that was fully assembled that had the water well drill on the back that the students built earlier, uh, a year or two prior to this. Uh, and it's now going from community to community drilling fresh water wells because there's a lot of deaths that are occurring simply because there's not fresh drinking water. But all this kind of transpired. We, we developed a relationship with a mission group, if you will, called Projecto Honduras. Uh, Projecto Honduras is a small clinic uh, based in Jutiapa, Honduras. 
when we got to Honduras, uh, we met this lady. She was quite a character in her own right, Evelyn Castellar, and her clinic was the Clinic uh, Los Angeles, or the Clinic of the Angels. She's a paramedic, and I'm an old paramedic, so we had that in common, and uh, it was fantastic. Not only did I get to shoot a film, uh, shoot this documentary, but I also got to go into the cloud forest, and I got to go back into my paramedic days. I got to remove some stitches for one of her patients. Um, I got to experience life in another country because of Evelyn. I, I will be grateful, eternally grateful, for the experience that Brian Copes has allowed me and Evelyn have allowed me to experience when we got down there to her clinic, these students, these high school students, these high school students changed the lives of people in a foreign country. Never been, never been there before. Most of them have never been out of the state. And they go to a foreign country. And they have changed the lives of many, many people. Uh, and it's just, a, I'm just grateful that I was able to be part of it. Well, we started with um, a clinic working first first aid in the home because I was a paramedic. And then we um, had so many um, people coming, patients coming, it was becoming cumbersome for the families. We built the other clinic down below. It's grown and grown. One of the reasons I love this project is Every dime a person contributes to Projecto Hunters, 100% goes to the people. We don't take anything, nothing, not even for a meal. All the money goes to the people. Jose and I are uh, fortunate and we're, we are also uh, large contributors, so we make sure that any donation goes to help the people. We have an education fund for children who can't get to school. Schools in this area, most of them only go to sixth grade. So if they want to have junior high or high school, we have to pay for the transportation to get them to the cities from the mountains. And, and you can see that the mountains are beautiful, but they're high and they're difficult. And it's a jungle out there. We're an all free clinic, all medicine, all consultation. And in fact, if people need dental or whatever, we take them into a dentist and we pay for it. But we mainly work with the cloud forest people, the people who have no means. They don't even have money, most of them. They just barter. They're kind of a forgotten people. The young adults from the Clara High School brought prosthetic legs and um, they, uh, they made them in the school. It's a project. It's, it was amazing. Uh, so many people are now able to walk or they're learning how to walk with the prosthetics. But it was very exciting. And I knew there were a lot of people without legs, but I had no idea there were that many people without limbs. But many of them have, are without limbs because of accidents up in the mountains or um, disease and poor treatment, infection. So I think, we had, I think we've had over 50 people without limbs come to the clinic. When I heard about the cars, I was very excited, especially the ambulance. I need to get the people their medical care. There are a lot of children who die in the cloud forest. The ambulance will allow us to go up higher to the homes. We've actually used the ambulance, and we went up to um, two different houses. I have two invalid patients. One has spina bifida with hydrocephalia, and um, the other was just in a car wreck, can't walk, and we had to take out the stitches of um, the one girl and uh, treat um, some pressure ulcers and, um, and infections. So we have a lot of people who are invalids who can't come down to the clinic, and now with the little ambulance, we were able to drive across a river, a river, not a creek, a river, and go up a trail, uh, not a road, a trail, and go to the homes and treat the people and carry the supplies and there were uh, boxes and I needed uh, to take um, quite a bit of medicine actually this time and I was able to do it.
without having to walk. And I usually have to have a lot of the children, volunteers in the town here, help and they all carry a box or they all help carry. It's, it's cumbersome. But with the ambulance now, I'll, if they're in school, I'll be able to go up to the mountains. I usually have to wait for them to get out of school. And it's hot. I'd prefer to go early morning. Uh, the Clara High School team also brought down another vehicle that will uh, that has a plow on the back of it, and also it has a um, apparatus for drilling wells. Many people do not have water. In fact, water is a bigger problem here than even electricity, because you can live without electricity, but clean water uh, or good water is just it's just such a necessity. And we have um, many, many people who have uh, skin lice, um, head lice. They have fungus, fungus all over their bodies, um, ringworm and skin fungus. Just the diseases that come because there's not good water. So having the, uh, the drill to make wells is going to be very important. In fact, I mean, I can't even estimate what a gift that is to these, uh, this, well, this area. I have two schools right now calling me every day who want us to go drill because there's two schools close by. Actually, there's probably over 20 grade schools that have no water in the school. They have no way, the children have no way to go to the bathroom. So, uh, and their, the schools are oftentimes quite a ways from their home. The driller is going to help give these schools access to water, give the children access to water, and that's going to help in the hygiene. And hygiene is one of the big, is the big problem here. The parasites, the worms, the amoeba, all of that adds to the starvation of people because the insects are eating the food, the worms are eating the food that should be going to the children. I, you can't put a price on what this drill will do. And it's hard to drill a well. So this is a gift. The plow will also help because there's no retirement plan here in Honduras. Okay. Or not out here in the agrarian community and in the cloud forest. Um, these people work not under the government cover. They're, a lot of times they're not even in the census. And so the men who are 70, 65, 70, they're still plowing by hand. And so the plow will be used by, for these people who need it most to um, prepare the land for growing crops. It's very exciting. I need a lot of help in the clinic. I need uh, help in the pharmacy. I need doctors. I need uh, medical people coming. Students help. Uh, we there's just so many chores, and basically, I meet in the clinic with my local volunteers. We need dentists. We need surgical teams. Um, uh, we have probably 50 percent of the men in this area have cataracts because of the sun, working in the sun, and it's killing them. And so many of the older men are just blind, and the older women too, more so in the men of the sun. They need to be prepared. The conditions here aren't great. Uh, the first two days the students came here. We didn't have water or electricity and it's hot. I don't know um, if you can see the sweat <laughs> as we're talking. Um, but expect uh, to see uh, forgotten poverty-stricken people and expect to work real hard. It's a lot of work. Uh, we came here in 2001 and we started uh, working the clinic from our home in 2002 and then the end of 2002 we had the, uh, the clinic. And then we built the park and the soccer field for the town. And it keeps growing, it keeps growing. A lot of the help is from our hunter and volunteers. They're wonderful, they help me. I love these people. I just do. I love them. We, these people need homes. They need water, electricity, 
they need homes. They need, you know, the mud huts, there's a chagas bug that lives in it, the malaria mosquito lives in it, and they get sick and they die. And it's a very poor community. And many of the children die of malaria also. I've got blind people, I've got disabled people, I've got legless people. And amazingly, so many of them live in the mud huts. It's very sad. It's very sad. We have a policy where uh, we serve everyone. And we serve mostly the mountain people, the poor. But if a person who could pay for medical services comes in, I serve them. Because if I start charging, then I'm not going to get the cloud forest people. And I don't look at their faith or their ethnicity. I just help everyone who wants to. I'm very, very grateful to the students from Calera High School. I think they've done an amazing, tremendous job. And I think they've had to overcome many obstacles and to come down here in the heat and without electricity, without water. And I, I've seen them work 12-hour days. It's been impressive. What these children have brought will continue to impact this community. I don't, I don't even know how to express how much help this is going to be. But what Calera High School is doing is going to be so powerful. It's going to be so powerful for the community. And it's going to give the people help and hope. Um, even though I haven't worked with a prosthetic, team a lot and really been involved in that. Watching that little kid walk on those crutches was really, really rewarding. That's when it kind of, kind of clicked that I was actually changing somebody's life because the vehicles, you know, they change people's lives and, you know, giving them water and transportation and stuff. But being able to walk is a freedom that everybody should have. I think I feel a hundred times better knowing that I actually changed people's lives. And uh, I think actually coming down here kind of prove the point that hey we can we can do this we can change people's lives all around the world and this is a good place to start I was really kind of amazed of how like how we was going to go to another country to help them out and that's what I've been wanting to do my expectation was really just to help them make their life a little bit easier amazing because it is changing people's lives a lot of what we say is that we're here to help people we're here to help people but truthfully, we're helping ourselves too. So there was no medical care outside of the Clinic of the Angels. So just being able to partner with them to help fit amputees to serve as an, an ambulance, uh, it, I tell you, just that alone was more than what I ever expected six years ago back in 2006 when I challenged my students to become modern day Henry Fords and invent a vehicle to send overseas. It was just a concept, a thought back then. I don't know if it was ever really something I thought would be a reality to where we could produce something good enough to send or something that would ever really be sent. To me, the projects were wonderful, but what really sets it apart is watching the kids develop into leaders through doing these projects. And to me as a teacher, that's what I wanted to see. That's what I got from it was watching the kids develop themselves. Right now, my students are involved in electric cars. They've actually wrote grants to where they have purchased Electrothon kit cars. We've purchased seven of them in total now. We've kept one of them, but we've given the other six away to local schools in central Alabama. We've hosted the first and now the second Electrothon race at the Barber's Motorsports Park to where my students are good, studying green technology, green energy. We've even got a biodiesel lab now where the kids will mix up their own fuel from french fry grease. As we progress through this, we've had uh, adaptive PE class come to us and they say, hey, we have a need. They said, we've got children that need activity. So my students built tandem bikes. They've got one, two bikes joined together, so an adult can ride one bike and a student can ride the other bike. As one person steers, the other person steers. And what that means to these adaptive kids, these special needs kids, it gives them a feeling of normalcy because they're able to go out and ride the bikes just like their peer counterparts. 
and they, just to watch the smiles on their face, hear the laughter in their voice as they're riding these bikes up and down the street is just tremendous. Currently, uh, we are working on a hydroelectric power plant because when we were in, in Honduras, Jose pointed out one of the needs that they have is the need for reliable electricity, especially when you get off the main road. There really is nothing. So we were looking around while we were in Honduras and noticed that they had a, a natural river that flowed through the community. So my students said, okay, we're going to build a hydroelectric power plant. They've taken a 24-foot pontoon boat and essentially they're going to anchor it in the river. They're cutting a hole in the center of this pontoon boat where they're taking a six-foot paddle wheel that my kids designed three-dimensionally on a the computer. They, they, we, we had it cut out on a plasma cutter. The kids have fabricated this paddle wheel together. It's six foot in diameter, four foot wide, but it's going to be lowered in the middle of this pontoon boat. When it hits the current of the river, it's going to rotate, creating electric current that we can send up to some of the mud huts along the bank. Uh, we're also raising money or collecting uh, building materials to where we can add two rooms onto the existing school. And so the community we were at, they, they were excited while we were there because they were graduating their very first high school student. So our thought is, well, why can't we partner, develop maybe a sister school? We can raise $4,000, add two rooms onto their school so they can offer middle school and high school. We can Skype back and forth so my kids, as they're learning Spanish, can talk to, to the kids in Honduras and the Honduran kids can then talk to the uh, uh, kids here as they're learning English. Now, because of all the stuff that's been going on here in the classroom, we have developed over, again, the past six years, uh, over 200 50 business partners. But one of the really unique ones that, uh, that just recently came up was the University of Alabama, uh, Birmingham campus, UAB, materials engineering department. Uh, worked. Uh, I actually mentored some students this past year and we looked at what would an inexpensive prosthetic leg look like if it was made out of modern day materials, plastics and rubbers. And I mentored the students on developing a leg uh, this is one that's actually made um, out of bamboo uh, for the leg. They've got the composites here, um, top and bottom. But they said the material cost on this leg would be about $5. And the concept is maybe we can take something like this out of the classroom into manufacturing to where it can be then taken to the developing countries and placed in the hands of those that, that really, really need it. Another partnership that we developed was with the electric cars. We developed a relationship with uh, Alabama Power uh, and Zoom Motorsports. But Alabama Power has uh, partnered with us here at Calera High School to establish these Electrothon races. Our goal is to, to place one of these cars in every county in the state of Alabama because as we're, we're teaching, we want to train the kids today for the jobs of tomorrow. Electric cars are here. They're going to be a bigger presence in the kids' lives, so we're wanting to, to expose our kids to it, train them for this activity, and uh, our goal is to attract manufacturers, whether it's automotive, whether it's green energy, manufacturers to Alabama as they build their, their plants. And most recently, we had the Society of Manufacturing Engineers Education Foundation name us as a prime school. The prime stands for Partners Response in Manufacturing Education. But essentially, they said we were one of the top 15 schools in the country at this point in time teaching manufacturing, whether we're manufacturing prosthetic legs, whether we're manufacturing utility vehicles or handicapable bikes. And they have really just blessed us by allowing us to expand our course offerings as a board member of Sky, I'd like to thank Bart Aslan of the uh, SME who saw what was going on with Brian and the students here at Calera. They thought it was fantastic and they have pumped a considerable amount of money into this project. Uh, at, at this time, I had somewhere around $35,000, which will go to purchase of new upgraded equipment. Uh, there'll be a scholarship fund. Matter of fact, this year, two students from, from Brian's uh, class have gone, have received scholarships to go on to 
further education. Uh, BART and SME are going to be a valuable, valuable partner in the future of not only what's happening in Calera, but I believe it's going to be a valuable asset to what's happening in the state of Alabama. I traveled here to Calera uh, because uh, we have been on a mission to find successful high schools in the country that have outstanding manufacturing curriculum and manufacturing uh, career opportunities to give to students. So uh, today, and during our visit at Calera, I came to see a lot. I, I came to see a school that uh, has amazed me, and it actually was uh, amazing to me when I heard about the great things they were doing. Part of what they do is build products, and they build products to help people who are in need. We see here a bike that they had uh, manufactured. These bikes are for people who are handicapped, and due to their handicaps, they're not able to ride a bike on their own. So they're able to get on a bike for the first time in their life and experience uh, what their own foot power, their own people power could do. So I this morning witnessed uh, students actually riding with these handicapped students and giving them the freedom to, for the first time, be mobile on a bike. We see here another product that's put together here at Calera by the students. We go from pedal power to horsepower. And this vehicle actually will be brought to uh, Honduras where students will uh, give this to the people in Honduras so that they'll have greater mobility in the, the villages that they live in that are in rural areas. Our SME Education Foundation has invested in schools like Calera. We've traveled the country and we've come to understand there are some outstanding, outstanding schools, exemplary schools, and Calera be, happens to be one of them. We heard about it through uh, uh, an outside source, what they were doing in Honduras and bringing prosthetic legs to people in need down there. We couldn't believe that this actually was being done by high school students. So we came down to see what's it really about. And after seeing it, we decided to invest in this school to help them really to partner more closely with the industry in the area. We see companies, what we really want is industry to start partnering with high schools to start partnering by being on advisory boards, by providing mentorships to students, by giving them internships after school and in the summer. This school and schools like this all around the country give students opportunities, opportunities that I had when I was a youngster, but these programs have gone away in, in large numbers around the country. And because of that, we're really shortchanging students. We're not giving kids the opportunity to learn to work with their hands to be innovative and come to develop products like these wonderful products here, to use their brains, their minds, and their, their, their muscle to build something that will help others. So this is an opportunity for students to, uh, to use their hands, to use their brain, and to help others. And what we want is companies around the, uh, this area and around the areas of all our schools to get involved, to become part of the mission, to uh, help students to know what uh, is expected of them when they get into the workforce, to tell the schools what kind of equipment they're using within their manufacturing facility so that they can be trained on the equipment while they're here. But I've never been to a school that has a better program than Calera. And the hands-on experience they're learning here will bring them to many, many great places in their lives. A program like this reaches out to all kids. It helps all kids to learn how to use their hands and to find what they're passionate about in life. We talked to a young student today who's going on to become an engineer. Others will go into machining, uh, electric, electrical work, welding, whatever it may be. We believe in the dignity of the worker, that all young people should be given the skills necessary to succeed in life. And it's programs like this that give them that ability. So I'm here today to say that I'm proud to sponsor Calera High School. We will continue to sponsor Calera High School, and we will continue to tell the world, the nation, how great the program is here. Our kids are our future. I think it's important to invest in them now, to teach them the skills to work not only with their hands, not only with their mind, but with their mind and their hands. And programs like this, I think, is going to be that, that vehicle. My goal, my future dream, would be to see programs like this placed not only throughout the state of Alabama, but throughout the whole southeast or the entire nation. Because I believe we can teach all kind of theory, but until the kids know how to apply the theory, the theory's not more than just a theory. It's just like the thought of taking a vehicle to a developing country. It was a theory. 
once the kids took the vehicle, it became a passion. I want these students, when they go through school, instead of being just theory, I want it to be a passion, a passion about learning, a passion about getting out and becoming a successful citizen in our society, how to be a, a contributing member to our society. Instead of being passive and watching life pass them by, I want, I want them to become leaders in our society, in our communities. When we went to Honduras in June of 2012, I saw with my own eyes, I saw these high school students, these high school students from Alabama go into a foreign country that, and most of these students have never been out of their, the state of Alabama, much less to a foreign country much less to an underdeveloped country like Honduras. Uh, and they went in and they changed the world. I mean, the name of this documentary, Children Changing the World, well, they changed it. I, they changed the lives. They improved the lives. They altered the lives. They took people from the cloud forest. They took the, their, they, their transportation. They've been, they've uh, they took their prosthetic leg, and now there are there are fourteen Hondurians walking around on legs that were invented by high school students in the state of Alabama. These children have truly changed the world.